There was a time in which all cars manufactured had a distinct national personality. You knew that you were driving an American car, you knew that you were driving a French car, you knew you were driving a German car, and you certainly knew when you were driving an Italian car. Right now I am driving a very Italian car. This car is, is registered and titled as a 1959 Auto Bianchi Bianca Trasformabile. I say registered and titled because, technically speaking, the Trasformabile model, or transformable, was not released until 1960. But nevertheless, here we are in the 1959 example. Auto Bianchi was a company founded jointly by the Bianchi motorcycle company Pirelli Tires and Fiat to market a particularly deluxe line of cars based on the Fiat Cinquecento. And the Cinquecento was the great heir to the legendary Fiat Topolino, the little mouse. The car that did for Italy what the Model T did for America, and indeed for the world. The Topolino motorized Italy. It got people out of bicycles and scooters into cars for the first time. The Nuova Cinquecento, or what we now know as the Cinquecento, was launched in 1955 as an updated model to replace the Topolino. It was powered by a 500cc engine, which in its first form put out a massive 12 horsepower. The car I'm driving today has got the upgraded engine, so I've got 17 full horses at my uh, disposal and nonetheless is a car very very capable for the kind of city driving for which they were designed although of course Italy being Italy and Italians being Italians it was not unusual for families to go on very long trips in the Cinquecento this the Auto Bianchi Bianchina was designed as a very very upmarket example. These cars, when new, cost almost twice what a standard Cinquecento cost, and so were really patterned and built for a clientele that wanted the practicality of a Cinquecento, but definitely needed and wanted a little more of what the Italians call la bella figura. And this certainly is a beautiful little car. You know, it's really difficult to design well a small car, and this is a very small car by any standards. But I think that Fabio Luigi Rappi, who was the head stylist at the Fiat Centro Stile, did a very good job with these Bianchinas, with, indeed with all of the uh, Auto Bianchi line. These didn't try to pretend to be small versions of big cars. They're proudly small, and I think that that is something that uh, really sets them apart in a land of, of, of other cars, in an arena of other cars, rather, that want to be more than they are. These Auto Bianchi are very proud to be a super deluxe micro car. And of course, this car is one of the cars that we'll be featuring in our upcoming exhibition, Small Wonders mini, micro, pedal, and toy cars later in the year. And it's very interesting when you think about a car that has 17 horsepower and sold for a not inconsiderable amount of money considering the size and accommodation. It is a strictly two-seater car with a little luggage bench behind me. The front compartment is largely taken up with the spare tire and of course in the back is the engine. But the level of finish, while very simple, is very high. The new owner of this Bianchina knew that he or she was paying for a deluxe product. This particular example is also a very special one because it's an original U.S. delivery model 
which you can tell from the larger US standard headlights and of course this instrument cluster with the speedometer in miles per hour and instructions in English. Needless to say, relatively few were sold in the US, but they proved very popular on both the Northeast and the West Coasts. They were imported, in fact, by Roosevelt Motors. The son of FDR was the Fiat distributor in the mid to late 50s, and he did a great deal to popularize the mark in America. I myself once owned a 1960 Fiat Cinquecento. I had always wanted one, but always lived in a place with hills. These are not really terrific for climbing hills, as you might imagine, with 17 horsepower. But finally, I was living in a place that I thought was flat enough to use one, and so I bought one. I absolutely loved it, but to drive in today's traffic, you have to plan ahead. There's not a lot of acceleration and not a lot of brakes on hand either. When you're driving a Bianchina, you have to choose your gear ratios carefully because the spacing in the four-speed gearbox is rather wide and if you don't have the right gear selected for the circumstance, you can easily get bogged down in a corner or, God forbid, climbing a hill. But there is a very simple pleasure about driving a car like this, especially at the beach. As a matter of fact, this is probably its perfect environment. This wonderful sea foam green is perfect at the seaside. I'm wearing clothes to complement the car because, well, why not? It's the kind of car that you feel like driving is an occasion. You might go to get the groceries in the Cinquecento, but when you're going out for a great lunch by the sea, you take the Bianchina. It's that kind of a special thing. And the Trasformabile is also a really neat idea because it gives you all of the openness of a convertible. This entire fabric roof opens up to the back, but you retain the steel rails of the hardtop model. So you get a little more structure, which is important in a car this small, but you can have all that open air motoring that you want. There was also a, an actual convertible model as well which is a lot of fun, but somehow to me feels a little bit more like a toy car than the Trasformabile or the sedan or station wagon models did. One of the things so interesting about driving this uh, Alta Bianchi, as well as uh, the Cinquecento on which it's based, is this instrument cluster. It tells you everything you need to know and nothing more. You have a fuel gauge, you have warning lights for the generator for oil pressure and to let you know that your lights are on and then a speedometer and the speedometer has indications because there's no tachometer as to where the maximum speed and gears are so you have here in this speedometer in miles per hour that first gear is good till about 15 miles per hour second up until about 25 and third until 40 at which point you've shifted into high gear 40 is really sort of the natural cruising speed of the Bianchina. Above that, you have the feeling that you're sort of whipping this poor animal into doing something that it really doesn't want to do. But nonetheless, it is capable enough, and I found that when I drove very small Fiats in Italy every day, they were terrific for the cut and thrust of city traffic. You could place these cars in any little spot you wanted to, and when you were out in the country taking a leisurely drive, they were quite wonderful companions. Not so wonderful for a car like this is the Autostrada or any sort of B road where people are hammering along trying to get someplace. With this car, I, I, I am put in mind of the famous slogan of the sailing lines in the 1960s when they're trying to compete against the airliner and they realize they can no longer do that for the pure speed of getting to a destination. And they made the trip part of the adventure. And just like those cruise lines in the 1960s, with the Auto Bianchi Banchina, getting there is half the fun. When it comes to handling, 
it's a slightly surprising experience. One would naturally expect that in a car this small that the steering and handling inputs would be very, very direct and very quick. Direct, yes. Quick, no. There's a reason why this car still has this very large steering wheel for leverage. It responds well. You always know what the car is going to do while you're doing it. But it's not a car really meant to be hurried. And as I said, its natural habitat is the city. But here on a beautiful country road, it's a fairly neat companion. Once you get used to the particular driving dynamics of the Bianchina, it is a lot of fun to drive. You have to put your head in the place in which this car was built and the time in which it was built. Don't ask it to do something that any very inexpensive modern car would do because it's probably likely to disappoint you. But if you slow down and get to the rhythm of the Bianchina, then it's almost like automotive meditation. And again, I'm just an absolute sucker for 1950s Italian cars and just the way they feel. They have a spirit, even simple, slow cars like this Bianchina. They're related. I'm driving this car now and I still feel the spirit of the great Fiat Ottovu race cars. Certainly not in the speed of the car, but just in the feeling. One of the great pleasures of driving a car like this Auto Bianchi is the fact that it is completely unthreatening. You get smiles from pedestrians, waves from joggers and bicyclists. There's no aggression at all about this car. And it's something that takes you back to a much simpler time. And for a car that we use today purely as a pleasure device, that's not a bad thing at all. Maybe we should put the entire world into a fleet of Auto Bianchi Bianchinas. It'd be a much more peaceful place. Or maybe people would get so aggressive trying to pass that things would get worse. I don't know. <laughs> It's worth a try, at least. Hi, it's Donald with this week's Audrain Fun Fast Fact Quiz Question. What secret to starting a Fiat of this period makes it almost an anti-theft device to the uninitiated? Watch our next video to find out the answer, or if you think you know it now, post it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.